everybody. Welcome to church. We got about five minutes before the service starts, so here are some church appropriate dance moves you can do whenever the spirit moves you. So get on up and let's sweat to some scriptures. Or maybe not. Or just, just let's go. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Make sure it's on the face. See it on the face. Yeah. Bring it together. Here we go. Let it go. You take the stone, you let it go. You're unhindered by armor. Let that elbow sway. Elbow, 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 elbow. Okay. One of my personal favorites. Resurrection. You gotta get down to get back. Yeah. Keep working, guys. Keep working. You're doing great. I'm doing great. I'm getting a little tired. We gotta stomp hard, stomp hard, stomp hard. You're crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. Yeah. Okay, we got a good break there, good break. Good job, guys. Here we go, ready? Get that, get that whip going. Scare those tax collectors, those merchants. Yeah. Merchants. Make sure you look afraid. This is salt. You look that and salt, salt, salt. I'm getting to you. You're doing great, everybody. Uh, oh, almost. Okay, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Two minutes, 30 seconds left. Here we go. Close again. One, two, three, four. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. You got his blessing. Two minutes left. I want to go for the bucket. No, I'm not gonna be okay. okay. Sharp the knife. Ride the horse up the mountain with the knife. Put your boy in the back. Hoist it up. No, hoist it up. Abraham, no. Hoist it up. Abraham, no. One out of thirty guys. We can do this. Okay, this one's important. The meekness is important. All right, one minute, guys. We're doing great. Keep it meek, but then watch this. This is not meek. Coming at the end. With swords, swords, cut them down the enemy, flame them dead, flame them dead, flame them dead. Whoo, whoo. Yeah, there. You do it. This one's important too. We're just sowing the seeds. Here we go. Sower. Make sure you hit that. Fertile ground. Stay away from that. Watch your back. No, God's got it for you. Watch your back. No, God's got it for you. I don't know how much more I can do this. You're gonna have to take it for me. On the last push, literally. Samson, working the pillar. Okay, guys, we're gonna have to start. Let's just start the service. Let's start the service. 
Westdale United Church is situated on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe Mississauga in a land covered by the Williams Treaty. We respectfully acknowledge and honor First Nation people's history, spirituality, and stewardship of this land, wherein our place of worship resides. Welcome to Westdale.
Well, good morning. Good morning. And happy Sabbath. It's wonderful to see your beautiful, shiny faces. We gather in the spirit of the Lord. Grace and peace to you in the name of God's beloved, whose heart beats even now in Peterborough, at Westdale, and in you. This is a day that the Lord has made. A day of rest, a day of hope, a day of peace, a day to sing, a day to lay down the burdens that you carry, a day to take up the new challenges that you face, a day to become one in the Spirit. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. This is the day. This is your day. This is our day. So let us rejoice. Amen. Jesus welcomes you just as you are, graces you with an unconditional love, a peaceful rest, and a yoke that is easy and light. Holy hands and holy feet, each one of you are gifted, chosen, and loved by God. Remember that. See what God sees, for you have been knit together in wonder and in love. So relax in the spirit, sway with the music, be captured by prayer, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Let us light our Christ candle to remind us of that light that shines within each one of us. Bob have a lot to navigate today. Brenda is away, uh, family day, up to her sisters in Allure, and so we taped everything early in the week, and so I hope I did it right. I don't know, and uh, we shall see. I invite you to enjoy it with me. Holy and loving God, when your light shines, nothing is hidden. When your light shines on us, there is joy. Bright God of light and glory, shine upon us. We have heard the call of God, and He bears under light. The light is shining, the door is open. We light this lamp of love. To kindle the flame of your love in us. Let us hold still 
and let the Spirit rest upon us. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, God of wondrous love, we take our place in the chorus of praise. We don't have the words to explain all that you are, but we have hearts that want to worship all that you are. You love us. You call us friend. You know us. You challenge the darkness. You are closer to us than breathing. You give us hope and courage. Holy Spirit, light of our journey, as we worship you today, touch our hearts with your bright fire. And may that quiet light that you have placed in our hearts shine. Bright Holy God, move among us when we gather in your name, for we gather as family. Stir the sacred holy waters by which we gather. Loving God, heart of our faith, in the imagination of heaven we gather, made as creative and wonder-filled people, we celebrate the awe of the world around us. And so we gather together today in your house of prayer, expecting the extraordinary. Community in the hands and hearts of people, spirits lifted to dance in your words and music. And as the candle we lit, so our lives, shining, dancing, changing, a light warm the light which you have placed within us. Hold us close, breath of life, and whisper your word of love into our hearts for this place that is home to all who gather. To so make this time and this space a holy gathering, O God, an arena of grace, and let the hurry and weary from our week fall away. Amazing God of amazing grace, surprise us. For we ask all this in Jesus' name, whose voice is our strength, in whose breath is the spirit of peace. Amen. <coughs> now I invite you to lift up your voices. Love your enemies, 
Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Judging others. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.
plant them. Would you pray with me? Spirit of God, living word, eternal wisdom, make us wise. Come, holy fire, ageless wisdom. Speak to us in the stirring of our spirits, in the beating of our hearts. And give us the language to speak your love in a thousand ways. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. A couple of years ago, before, just before the pandemic, like just before, days before, I had the pleasure of doing something that I never thought I would ever do. Don't know why, I just thought I would never go. But a friend of mine who had worked at one in Germany, her name is Nora Futen. She moved to Germany in the 70s and she worked in an opera house there, training the opera singers. And she called me up one day and she said, Chris, I want to take you to the opera. You ever go to the opera? No. The only thing I ever thought about the opera was uh, Bugs Bunny and Umber Fudd. Remember he, she had the braid and he had the braid. Laura called me up and she said she wanted to take me to the opera, The Magic Flute. I can't say no to Nora. So I thought this will be amazing, amazing singing, the music, the set, design. When she moved to Germany, she met her husband there, uh, Horst uh, Futen, and he was the set designer. They moved back to Canada and were sheep farmers. And, and she became a minister, a United Church minister. And she lives in Brantford. And so she worked in an opera house, a beautiful singer. And uh, she called me up and said, I want to take you to the opera. I thought, Nora, I've never thought about the opera before. I said, is it in English? And she said, no, it's in German. But don't worry, Nora said, there's a screen over the stage that translates the words into English. And there was this beautiful opera house in Toronto, just gorgeous. Uh, just like a cylinder, just magnificent. And above the, uh, the stage was this big screen, and it translated uh, from German into English. At the wall. Well, if I claimed to know what was going on, most of the time I'd be lying to you. But there was a flute in it, and it was magical, because when it was played, everybody seemed to get along. Even the wild animals were tame. People stopped fighting. When there was action, I didn't even need to look up at the words. I could figure out what was happening, but when there was no action, if I didn't look up, I was lost. I needed translation. Our reading today is one of the most challenging of the readings in the, in the Gospel. Charlotte read so well, she places us in a field of promise. Listening to Jesus preach, listening for our names, listening for the offer of a hopeful future. You have heard it said, Jesus begins. You have heard it said, translation, this has always been the way. But I tell you, I have a better way, Jesus said. So the people sit back down. A few who left came back. Jesus, in his daring, reinterpreted something as sacred to the ancient mind as was the laws of Moses. You have heard it said, but I say unto you, translation, we need laws. Jesus knew that. I didn't come to abolish them, Jesus said. The one thing neither nature nor the human race can tolerate is chaos. To survive, we need some semblance of law and order. A few more people stopped folding up their blankets and sat back. Few years ago in Atlanta, Georgia, in a packed church, it was 2009, it was May 2009, the year that Barack Obama was elected president. And there was a buzz in the United States, and I met a person that night, got to shake her hand and thank her, a woman who embodied what we heard today, a woman who translate, translates the gospel in her very living. You remember seeing that Norman Rockwell painting? It was first published in Look Magazine in January 1964. It was called The Problem We All Live With. Rockwell left the magazine shortly afterwards because they objected to him addressing themes of a political nature. It was very striking and not like his other illustrations. It was of a little girl, about six years old, named Ruby Bridges. 
an African-American girl on her way to William Franz Elementary School, an all-white public school on November 14, 1960, during the New Orleans school desegregation crisis. Because of threats and violence against her, she's escorted by four deputy U.S. Marshals, and Rockwell paints that painting from her perspective. And you see these four Marshals there, just from their shoulder up, or the shoulder down, and sort of cropped at the shoulders. I had the pleasure of meeting Ruby Bridges. She talked about how her family suffered for their decision to send her to that school. Her father lost her job as a gas station attendant. The grocery store the family shopped at would no longer let them shop there. Her grandparents, who were sharecroppers in Mississippi, were turned off their land. Her parents separated. I've been reading a book the last few nights called Ruby Goes to School. It's a book by a man named Robert Coles. He's the author. I've been thinking a lot about Ruby Bridges this week. Because when Ruby Bridges was in school, her first year in 1960, she was assigned a child psychologist, Robert Coles. He was assigned to meet with her throughout the year. How would a child deal with people yelling at her each morning? He would watch how she absorbed all of this the words, the actions. And so Robert Coles wrote a book called Ruby Goes to School. And in it he tells the story of seeing Ruby go up to the protesters and closing her eyes and talking to them. He said she would walk up to them and close her eyes. He asked Ruby why she would talk to these people. And she said, I'm not talking to them, I'm praying for them. that God would forgive them. She would walk right up to them and close her eyes. Jesus said, you have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Okay, this is going to be good. I want to hear this. If somebody hits you, turn the other cheek. Really? Have you ever done that? I don't think I've ever. Let's go home. No, wait, Jesus said. Let me explain. Love your enemies. Translation. Love will change the world. I'm reminded of these words of Martin Luther King. For the person who hates, the beautiful becomes ugly and the ugly becomes beautiful. For the person who hates, the good becomes bad, and the bad becomes good. For the person who hates, the true becomes false, and the false becomes true. That's what hate does. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Translation, an eye for an eye leaves everyone blind. The Bible says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. It's right there. Limited love. You treat people differently. There had to be some limit to this love, right? But Jesus said, this still doesn't fulfill the law. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Translation, unlimited, unconditional love. Martin Luther King Jr. said, you can pass a law to make a white man serve a black man, but you can't pass a law to make a white man love a black man. takes grace. We're talking here of a love that goes between the law to address, to speak to the question of motivation. A love that goes between the law filling the inevitable cracks. A love that in its unconditional form of forgiveness goes beyond the law and even beyond justice. Jesus uses the imperative he commands us to do the very thing that cannot be commanded. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. You know that while laws may be irritating, love is far more demanding. He made things harder. Most of all, he knew that we must love our enemies, and not for their sake alone, 
but for ours as well. Hatred simply has no place in the lives of the children of God. No place. I remember spending time with a man at Collins Bay Penitentiary in Kingston. He had taken lives. And now he was trying to give life. He became an ordained Anglican priest while at Collins Bay. And no church would ordain him. He had a hard time finding a church that would allow him. And eventually he went to Edmonton. I keep in, in touch with him. His name was Ron Dooms. Ron Dooms. one time heavy for a motorcycle gang. He was a tough guy. Remember Ron telling me that now he just thinks about murder. He doesn't do it. I thought, well, that's an improvement. <laughs> I used to have these movie nights on Friday nights and used to make popcorn. We'd watch movies and we'd turn up the volume. It was really... And he would just hover in the doorway. Because he said, loud music and violent movies, he said, I have to avoid these. He said, wicked thoughts come to my mind, he told me, when I see these violent things. But I don't invite them in, he said. For him, force had been the only language he spoke. Every time I saw my friend, he seemed to have a black eye or a split lip. He was always taping up his glasses. You could see him walking the hallways with a Bible in his hand, a Bible and a black eye. And what had happened needed no translation. He was no longer a man of violence. He was a man of peace at all costs. And it cost him dearly. dedication demanded in our reading today is not a new law or a moral teaching. Instead, it is forgiveness. Its vital element is the light and warmth of the Holy Spirit. Here is Christ, the essence of salt and the strength of the tree that bears good fruit. The sermon Jesus preaches needs no translation. It shows us the character of a community which shines like a light for the whole world. Last night I was coming home from the grocery store, it was about 7 o'clock, and I could see this entourage on Lansdowne, I think they were probably coming from Ottawa, there was an entourage of trucks, they had Canadian flags, they, the trucks are flashing lights, they weren't hocking their horns, but they were, there was an entourage there, and, and they had flags there, F. Trudeau, okay? F, and I, I think such Violence, it just, I had to pull over, I just cried, like it was, it was so violent, so violent. Love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, because to love them doesn't mean that you can't disagree. What I think they forgot was that Trudeau and the government and all fellow human beings, they breathe, they bleed, they get sick, they mourn loved ones, and they dream for their children just as they do. Jesus didn't tell us to love our enemies because love would or would not work. The idea probably never occurred to Jesus to raise the question of whether or not it was practical. He told them that they should do it so that they might be children of God. For we are called to out-love, to out-pray, as did our beloved Lord and friend. The only road to peace within and among ourselves lies through that love which once walked the earth, and in whose name we are again gathered here today. May it be so. Amen and amen.
This story is called Rebuilding After Loss, Lisa's Story. Nothing prepares us to lose the people we love most in the world. Lisa's husband, Steve, was in and out of palliative care for years. It was a difficult journey. He wasn't ready to leave this life, Lisa said. The week before he died, he said, I'll surprise you, yeah, you'll see me walking around that circle with my cane. But that didn't happen. After Steve died, Lisa attended a widow's support circle facilitated by ORA, a mission and service partner. ORA, named after a Maori word meaning life, helps people move through grief and loss using workshops and support circles. Hearing the stories and wisdom shared, the laughter and the tears, brought me to a place where I felt comfortable in sharing a bit of my own pain and my own journey. And there was a sense of solidarity in our pain. Because being a widow is a different kind of loss than losing a parent, a child, or a friend, Lisa said. In the widow's group, there was an understanding that surpassed words. The support helped me through things like, what do I do with the wedding ring now? Do you still wear it? Do you not wear it? On a practical level, do you change the sheets because you can still smell your partner on the sheets? The first time you have to check that box on the government form that you're no longer a missus but a widow. I just burst into tears. ORA, just like other outreach ministries we have, is a tangible way of showing faith in action. Your gifts through mission and service help people like Lisa rebuild their lives after loss. At one of the most difficult times of my life, your generosity through mission and service provided care, love, and comfort. Indeed, we are not alone. We live in God's world. Thank you for your support, says Lisa. into prayer. I'm going to share with us, you something that I sometimes do to quiet, quiet all the other voices. I repeat Psalm 46, or part of Psalm 46, 46 verse 10. So I invite you to repeat after me. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be still. Be. Healing river, source of life. Maker of heaven and earth, creator of sea and sky, governor of day and night. You command the waves to be still and calm the stormy sea. You who made and makes and remakes heaven and earth. You who brings justice and peace and sets prisoners free and sights the blind. You who lifts us to our feet every time we are knocked down and watches in faith as we walk your path of love. You tell us to love our enemies and turn the other cheek and pray for those who hurt us. May we always be open to your love, O oh God, that your love also may be revealed in our living. God of grace, teach us your gentle ways that fill our souls with strength. For we stand in the field of promise, a hopeful harvest of love for the world. In this place of welcome, here at Westdale, doors are opened, lights shine from the windows. Gracious God, your gift of love for us is relentless and everlasting. In our darkest times, shine your light. In distant places, seek us out. 
In the darkest night, stars still shine. On an island out at sea, we are never alone. So into your care, O oh God, we place those for whom we love, those for whom we worry. In the light of your love, O oh God, we lift up out loud, or in the silence within us, the many people and things on our minds and the concerns that we carry with us. Shine upon them with healing and with grace. God, in kindness, hear our prayer. Heal all that is broken in our hearts, in our streets, in our world. This day, O oh Lord, may we know ourselves loved and valued. This day, O oh Lord, may we notice the beauty all around us in all things great and small. This day, O oh Lord, may we not miss the messages of love and joy and peace and hope that you send us. And help us to see and hear the Holy throughout our day. God of love, whose patience humbles us and touch can heal us, grant us a rare kind of courage. Living God, draw together all our prayers, silent and spoken, as we show our trust in your love by joining all your church in the prayer that Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, for thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Saints of Westdale, the gift of your life is the source of blessing in God's world. Every good gift, every good thing is a gift from God. So let us glorify God through the gifts of our lives, our time, and our talent, and our treasure. Let us give thanks to God by presenting our offering.
for ideas, the events committee, if you have any ideas you'd like to share and things, events and fun things you want to do. And the different uh, categories there, uh, social, spiritual, learning, leisure, wellness. So we'll start up our Bible study soon, our Bible chat, uh, once, once that Lent starts. And look forward to that. So if you have any ideas, the wooden box is out there, a little word house, and you can put your ideas in there. And, uh, coffee time resumes next Sunday. Look forward to that. Mission and Outreach. And if you'd like to join the Mission and Outreach, do you have a passion for mission? Let us know. The office is closed tomorrow. For family day. I have an announcement for the UCW. I started with Nancy on Thursday. So the UCW have a wonderful project uh, for Cameron House which uh, offers emergency shelter and support for women over the age of 18. So you're going to be um, putting together some uh, comfort bags. So if you'd like to donate uh, to that, um, that would be wonderful. So the items are posted on the UCW bulletin board in the hallway. And the plan is to deliver them by April the 13th. Any else, Nancy, about that? Uh, yeah. It's why I'm there to, to help uh, the women there. And the World Day of Prayer is coming up. That's Friday, March the 4th in Bridge North. And, and so that's, uh, that's coming up as well. Transform it with your courage, heal it with your compassion. Go forth in the light and love of God, giving glory to God in all that you do. Go with joy, and may you be surprised by angels and join in their laughter. Go in the love of the Maker, who gives us life and calls us each by name. Go in peace. And may the heavens bless you, and may the stars make you wonder and smile. May the light in your soul guide you, and may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. 
Amen. Thank you.